Well, it's Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's time for a sports and fantasy football Q&A here on the Schleg Daddy TV channel. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. I'm just reading them off of Twitter. I haven't prepared them, so bear with me if there's a few seconds of dead air, if you will, as I try to get through the questions and find them. Uh, Vinny Cicero has two to start it off. He says, my biggest question with your 10-15 mock draft, how did Dak Pros Prescott not even get a mention? Um... I'm trying to remember, oh, the 10-15 mock draft. In the last one, didn't I have Dak in the second round to, like, the Eagles? Uh, keep in mind this, Vinny Cicero, is that there's still a lot of homework and a lot of work left for me to do in terms of preparing for the 2015 NFL draft. To be fair, we still have a lot of college football season left. We still have the bowl season left. You know, there are so many things left, so... As I advise on every mock draft, you know, it's not perfect. It's just meant to be a gauge of different things. Sometimes I try out different scenarios. In some ways, it can kind of be a view in terms of players, not so much just that I'm big on, but that I envision rising as the draft process continues. You know, it's like I'll say with uh, last year, a lot of people were putting down Aaron Donald as like a second round pick, and I was telling anybody that would listen that this was a top five talent to me that could go in the top 10 and he ended up going 13th overall the year before that Ziggy Ansa you know I was talking about this guy's going in top 10 maybe top five and he went in the top five and I have a track record of you know finding these guys that I know that are going to rise up to draft boards so but in terms of Dak Prescott still a lot of evaluation process left so you know I haven't even fully evaluated Dak Prescott, Prescott, excuse me, completely enough to be able to give a grade to him one way or another. You know, just so keep that in mind. There's nothing personal against Prescott at this point. I hope he wins the Heisman. Um, if Kyle Rudolph is healthy, he will do what uh, Gronk did last week, same as Jimmy Graham did last year. Uh, well, I don't even get what you're asking. Shea, 10 and 1 with tight end, or 1 on 1 with tight end equals TD, Whitten and Graham. Um, well, yeah, anybody, on, I think that's what you're asking. If you have a tight end that is playing against the Bears, then you must start him. Frankly, if you have any offensive player playing against the Bears defense on your fantasy team, you must start them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, response from Dick Vitale, because I said, thankfully, you're not paid to talk about the NFL because you would embarrass yourself. I mean, he already does that when he talks about college basketball. Every year it's Duke in North Carolina in the national championship game in his fucking eyes. Thanks for your love. Heck, my wife calls me a lot worse. Uh, well, I don't know about all that. Um, <laughs> E-M-A-L-D-M-Y-S, please. I'm a Cardinals fan. I'm really depressed about Oscar Tavares. Have you ever been really emotionally attached to a player? Man, I tell you, that was sad and tragic. You know, it's just sad and tragic in general because you're talking about a 22-year-old that is now gone. It's not even just so much the fact that he was such a promising prospect and such a promising player with such a bright future ahead of him. I mean, this is somebody that had just even, you know, begun to live his life. And now it's gone. That's, that's tragic in and of itself. In terms of players that I was emotionally attached to, um, one of my favorite college players of all time was Hank Gathers. And no, not just because he died. I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it. I mean, I love whenever I would get the chance to watch those Loyola Marymount teams under Paul Westhead. They just ran and ran and ran. I love the style of college basketball they played. And I loved Hank, me some Hank Gathers. And when he died, that was very sad. Very, very, very sad. Um, you know, been other sad athlete deaths over the years. Another one that really affected me greatly was uh, the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt Sr., because he was the one guy in NASCAR that I ever gave a shit about. He was the one guy that ever caused me to follow NASCAR at all in any way, shape, or form. I grew up on the Intimidator, and basically I watched him die. So, you know, you get emotionally attached to that. You need some of these individuals. And it's very sad when you see their life snuffed out like that in such tragic circumstances. UF Gator Chomp 93. Which Super Bowl would NFL fat to more? Denver versus New Orleans or Pats versus Cowboys? Um, well, they've already had Manning versus Breeze in the Super Bowl. And they'd fat to that. Uh, Pats versus Cowboys, they'd fat to that. But there'd be nothing more fappable for them 
than Denver versus Dallas. Peyton Manning versus Tony Romo. ESPN would melt. The NFL Network would jizz. That easily would be the one they'd fap to the most. I don't even see how you'd make an argument how it wouldn't be. I can't believe you didn't ask that question. But in terms of the other two options you provided, probably Patriots and Cowboys. Because we've seen Breeze versus Manning in a Super Bowl. We haven't seen Romo versus Brady. Is Mike Shanahan an overrated coach since he had no real major success as a coach since Elway Davis led teams? Uh, I guess you could make that argument. I think he stayed in Denver too long and overstayed his welcome, and that definitely didn't help. And then he just was bad in Washington. So, yeah. And does Terrell Davis deserve a bust in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? And should he be in already? Um, you know, he's the one that they kind of say fits into that uh, Gale Sears type of category in terms of he was great when he played, but how much did he really play? Did he play enough? Um, if Terrell Davis made the Pro Football Hall of Fame someday, would I pitch a fit? No. Would I validate it and somewhat justify it? Probably. But I would say this is if Terrell Davis got in, then I would want to see Sterling Sharp go in. Uh, History Buff 188. Do you think that Blake Bortles is the next Blaine Gabbert for Jacksonville? By the way, I'm a Jags fan. I think it's a little early to go to that because I think Bortles has more overall physical talent. I think he has a better head on his shoulders, a better heart in his chest. Um, but he hasn't looked good so far. But it's not like the alternative in Hennig was really any better. And sometimes young players, especially quarterbacks, have got to play through their mistakes and hopefully learn from them. Um, you know, keep in mind, though, that heading into that draft, I only had Bortles as a second to third round prospect. You know, people looked at the size and they were comparing him to Big Ben and Andrew Luck. And he did not have the athleticism and all-around polish of a luck, and he most certainly didn't have the arm strength of a Big Ben. You look at Bortles, and you think he has a cannon for an arm, and he doesn't. He was not somebody who consistently went through progressions down at Central Florida, and there were issues there. There were concern concerns there. I think it's far too early to jump off of the bandwagon. Um, right Wielder 259, being a Bears fan, who's your least favorite Packer, Lion, and Viking? Uh, least favorite Viking was Randy Moss just because he would kill the Bears and he was the player I wanted the Bears to take in 98 because I knew what he was going to be. I love Moss, but I hated him as a Viking. Uh, in terms of Packers, uh, I still hate Brett Favre the most. Rodgers is getting there, but it's got to be Favre. Although I could make a very strong case for Charles Martin. And then if you don't know who that is, look it up. Type in uh, Jim McMahon, 86 Packers. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, in terms of Detroit Lions, uh, just because he was so goddamn good, and again, because he torched the Bears over the years, I probably have to say Barry. God, I miss watching Barry Sanders play, though. Man, he was incredible. Uh, John Madden fan, who uh, has now seen the light and understands that Jay Cutler sucks. Don't you, John Madden fan. You will no longer try to spin any positives about Jay Cutler. You know he sucks now. I told you so. Uh, what are your thoughts on Lamar Houston's self-inflicted injury? What consequences should the Bears lay upon him, if any? Well, if he tore his ACL or something, he already gave himself all the consequences he could imagine. The Bears have already forked over a ton of money to him and will continue to do so. Uh, my thoughts on the injury? What the fuck are you celebrating a sack for when you've played like shit all season and your team is getting decimated and you're down 28 points in the fourth quarter? What 25 points, whatever it was in the fourth quarter. Why are you sitting there celebrating that? Why are you celebrating a sack? Just cut that shit out. It's so stupid. And it's so fitting for what the Bears are. Oh, God. Uh, let's see here. Tommy X 54 who are the top five best QBs of all time and why? It doesn't have to be in order. Uh, let me name the five um, in any particular order the way I see it. I've got to go Sammy Baugh, Otto Graham, Joe Montana, John Unitas, Brett Favre. I'll take out Baugh because I would put him more so in the category of maybe greatest football player of all time. 
Um, in that case, I would maybe put Brady there. Oh, you Manning? Okay, whatever. That's my top five, so fuck off. But that's probably what it would be. In any particular order, it would be Favre, Montana, Unitas, Otto Graham, and Tom Brady. Um, let's see, a Viking fan for life. I lost to the top scorer of the week in week three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Do I deserve to be one and seven with the team I have? And just to let you know, he sent me a screen cap. His quarterback is Stafford. His wide receivers are Demiris Thomas, Brandon Marshall, Emmanuel Sanders. His running backs are Ben Tate and Ronnie Hillman. Tight end is Jordan Cameron. His uh, flex player is Jarek McKinnon. He's got guys like Ahmad Bradshaw, Bishop Sankey, Travis Kelsey, Andre Johnson all on his bench. Uh, no, you don't deserve to be 1-7. and seven. Unfortunately, sometimes those are the breaks, and that's how fantasy football goes. Now, at this point in time, you would have to hope that the overall talent on your fantasy team, you have a pretty good fantasy team, and it sucks for you that you're 1-7. and seven. It's almost unfair. You have to hope that with another four, five, six weeks left until your league's fantasy playoffs begin, that you might be able to get hot and get some type of correction and maybe get into your playoffs or at least at worst, you know, wreak some havoc on other people. Uh, but, yeah, it sucks, and sometimes it happens. I've been there, you know. I, I literally had a season where I had a team that scored the second most points in the league and I finished seventh out of ten teams and missed the playoffs. Six teams made the playoffs. I scored the second most points. Literally every single week I was going up against somebody else's buzzsaw week. It was bullshit. And it happens. What can you do? It sucks. No, you don't deserve to be one and seven, though. Although, looking at some of the players that you've added, you maybe added Ben Tate because I told you to, maybe Ronnie Hillman because I told you to, uh, maybe Jarek McKinnon because I told you to. Um, so, you know, these are players that you added much later. But still, with that said, it's unfortunate, it sucks, but that's how it goes. Jay Gore, 492. What did you think of Big Ben's performance against the Colts? Outstanding stuff. I mean, just incredible, just incredible. It was it was spectacular. Uh, Alex Shirley, ten. Who deserves the coach of the year so far? Mark, Mike Tomlin or Bruce Arians? Um, I don't even have Tomlin in my top three, but he probably has to go in the top five now. So out of those two, it would be Bruce Arians, and it wouldn't even be close. Um, but in terms of who is my coach of the year at this point in time, you're just going to have to watch my uh, midseason awards video to find out. Uh, let's see here. We got anything else? I don't really see anything else in terms of questions, so I will thank all of you for submitting your questions for this Q&A, and keep in mind, you can go to pfspot underscore schlegel on Twitter and tweet me your questions. You can check out my article at profootballspot.com about the Chicago Bears 2014 season being over, because it is. They are exactly who the fuck I said they were going to be before the season began. Anyways, thanks for your questions. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you later. Bye.